All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, this is the second part of two parts for 6.3, adding and subtracting rational expressions. So in the last lesson, we looked specifically at, um, well, adding and subtracting rational expressions that have the same denominator. And that was as simple as combining the like terms in the numerator. Uh, now uh, we are going to look at rational expressions that have different denominators. And we need to recall the last part of the previous video where we found LCDs. So that's going to be an important point of this lesson here. Okay, so here's our question in yellow. Uh, so our question here is x minus 15 over x times x plus 1 plus x minus 4 divided by x plus 1. All right, so uh, first thing we want to do is we want to state our restrictions. And our restrictions are basically what we don't want. Uh, well, we don't want the denominator to ever equal 0. So anything that's going to make the denominator 0, which namely if I have a 0 here, uh, for the x value, that's going to make the rest of this turn into 0. And that's not a good thing. Also, if I have a minus 1 right here, so if x equals minus 1, that's going to make this factor a 0, and then this denominator becomes 0, and same with this one here. Okay, so that's our restriction. x can never equal 0 or negative 1. Uh, then, this is the next very, very important thing, is the LCD. We need to write down on the side that our LCD is x times x plus 1. Sorry about that here, plus 1. Okay, now um, we need to notice also that in our question here, uh, this second expression, it's basically missing the x part of the LCD. Okay, so how can I fix that? Well, if I multiply this by an x, then I have to multiply the numerator by an x as well. So now, if I look at the denominators of both parts, I have the same denominator. Okay, now I can actually go and simplify my uh, expression by combining the like terms in the numerator. But before I do that, I want to notice that I've got x minus 15 plus, and basically I've got Sorry here, I'll write that a little better. I've got x times x minus 4. Okay, so we need to remember to multiply that uh, x through this bracket right there. Okay, so that becomes uh, x minus 15 plus x squared minus 4x, okay? And we also need to remember that this is all over x, x plus 1, and so is this. This is all over x plus, sorry, x times x plus 1. All right, so now we can just combine the like terms in the numerator here, and we end up with uh, x squared minus 3x minus 15 and that's all over x x plus 1 and just restate your restriction so x cannot equal 0 and negative 1 and uh, the next thing that you would do is if you can factor and simplify, so if you can factor it out and reduce any of the factors out, then that's what you'd want to do. And in this case, it doesn't happen, so you can just leave it as is. Okay? Okay, so let's have a look at this next question. Uh, we've got 6x over x minus 5 minus 240 over x squared minus 2x minus 15. All right, so this question is a little different than the one before because we uh, need to actually factor out 
this denominator right here. Whenever there's anything that needs to be factored, we factor, okay? Uh, so let's actually look at this and factor. So I've got 6x over x minus 5 minus 240 over x minus 5 times x plus 3. Okay, so now let's state our restrictions. Our restrictions are going to be um, x cannot be uh, 5 and negative 3. So x can never equal 5 and negative 3. It's always a good idea to just kind of do it, get it over with so that it's written down somewhere. Uh, that you don't forget it at the end after you've done any reducing potentially that may have happened. Okay, so now let's uh, figure out our LCD for this. So our LCD for this question is x minus 5 and x plus 3. Okay, I also want to notice right away that this here is missing, I guess you can say, uh, a factor of x plus 3 in the denominator if I want the denominators to be the same, right? So in order to make the denominators the same, uh, I need to multiply this by x plus 3. But if I do something uh, at the bottom, I have to do it at the top. That's right. So this is what I end up with. 6x over x plus minus 5. Okay, that's what it was. Now when I introduce the factor of x plus 3, I need to remember that I have to multiply it in at the top as well. Okay, so now that's subtracting 240 over x minus 5 and x plus 3. Okay, so now I've got a common denominator. You notice here x minus 5x plus 3 x minus 5x plus 3. Okay, so all I do now is simplify the numerator. So let's actually go through and multiply this 6x through this bracket right here. And that ends up as... six x squared plus eighteen x minus two forty all divided by x minus five x plus three okay so at this point we in, we're done the addition subtraction part of it we need to check whether it can be simplified uh, so can this be factored? Well, we notice that the numerator can be factored and the numerator factors out to 6 times x plus 8, x minus 5, all divided by, and we've got our, our just write down our same denominator. Uh, and then... We notice here we've got an x minus 5 and an x minus 5 that reduced to 1. And then our final solution, my friends, is 6x plus 8 all over x plus 3, where x can never equal negative 3 and 5. Okay, so let's have a look at another example. Okay, so this example is a little different than the other ones. Uh, it looks a little more complicated. You're going to notice you've got 1 plus 1 over x in the numerator, and then you've got x minus 1 over x in the denominator. So what you actually have to do is you have to find a common denominator that is going to be for this numerator and a common denominator for the denominator, right? So you're going to find a common denominator for this part here. So basically break it up into two pieces where you've got 1 plus 1 over x. So that's the numerator of our original question. And we're going to find an LCD. So let's write it so that it's over one fraction. Well, 1 can actually be written as x over x. 
and that doesn't change the value of anything, right? So we've got plus 1 over x, and we could rewrite that as x plus 1 over x. Okay, um, x plus 1 over x. Yeah. Okay, so now let's work with the bottom part here. Okay, so this part was right there, and then we're going to go back, and this part, we're going to look at it as x minus 1 over x, and see if we can write that out with an LCD uh, of x. Uh, well, let's see. How can we write it with an LCD of x? Uh, if I want this to have a denominator of x, I'm going to have to multiply it by an x over x, right? Uh, minus 1 over x, and then that actually gives me x squared minus 1 all over x. Okay, so now let's rewrite this as one, sorry, x plus 1 over x, and that's all divided by x squared minus 1 over x. All right, so remember when you were learning fractions way back when, uh, when we had fractions dividing by fractions, we actually wrote it out this way. So let's see if this makes a little more sense. x plus 1 over x, and you see that blue divide sign? I'm going to write it like this instead. Okay, and that's divided by x minus x squared minus 1 over x. So remember what we did in this case, folks? What did we do with that part right there? That's right. If your memory serves you correctly, what we did was we actually rewrote the first part just the way it was, and we multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, so the reciprocal of that is x over x squared minus 1. And now it's easy peasy lemon squeezy. Okay, so that reduces there to 1 and 1. And um, we notice right here that this can actually be factored out as x plus 1, x minus 1. Okay. Um, and I got so excited about doing this question, I actually forgot to do what, folks? I forgot to state my restrictions. Okay, so I'm actually at a really good point right now where I could state my restrictions. Uh, so let's state our restrictions. Uh, what are they going to be? X cannot be, I'm going to write it up here. X can never be, let's see, I just reduced this X out, so that means it can never be zero. And it can never be plus 1, and it can never be minus 1, because I just saw that right here and here. Okay, uh, let's see. What should I do now? Okay, I'm going to rewrite this, because it looks a little, a little uh, messy. So let's choose a different color, just so that you can see what my next train of thought is. Uh, so I'm just going to rewrite all of this stuff to what it would look like over here. So I've got x plus 1 over x uh, times, and it's going to be 1 over x plus 1 x minus 1. Okay. Actually, this x I already cancelled out, didn't I? Already, it's gone. So this x here, it should actually be a 1. Okay, um, now I want you to notice here that we've got our x minus 1 factor. This can actually cancel with this one. And then really, all I'm left with for this one is 1 over x minus 1, where x can never equal zero or and plus or minus negative one. Okay, hope that was exciting. Uh, the next page I'm going to recommend you hit pause so that you can figure out the questions yourself. So here it is. 
Okay, so here's three questions. I want you to take a few minutes, press pause, and try them, and I'll show you the solutions in the next slide, okay? All right, folks, so here are the answers to those three questions before. I hope you, uh, just so you notice where the answers are, this is the answer for one, and here are your restrictions. This is your final answer to two, and those are your restrictions. And this here is your answer to three and your restrictions are over there. Hope you had fun. I know I did. See you later. Okay, so here are five questions. There's five groups of rational expressions here. So what I'd like you to do is Find the LCD, the lowest common denominator for each group. Uh, press pause and I will show you the answers in a couple of minutes. So give them a try on your own, please. Okay, so here are the answers. I've uh, written them out for you. Um, hopefully you had some success, and if you have any questions, please make sure you ask. Thanks.